Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Good, thank you. It's good to see you. Good to talk to you. Yeah, you as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to welcome this woman. She is a filmmaker, a director, a photographer, film editor, and model. As a photographer and videographer, she's captured a great variety of people and places. And for her directing and filmmaking, I want you all to check out the Tatum Project. Dot com. That's T-A-T-O-M. You're going to find a variety of things from art short films as well as some music videos. Most recently, she has directed the music videos for two songs from an album called Alone With My Faith, the title track, and also the classic gospel song Amazing Grace. These were recorded by singer-songwriter Harry Connick Jr., so, Georgia Connick, it's a great pleasure. How is your day going so far? It is great. I'm so uh, happy to be here talking with you. Thank you for having me. So, Georgia, tell me, what are you happiest doing? Well, um, I really love art. I think art in general just brings me so much joy. I think it, in for me specifically, specifically art would be filmmaking. I, I love it so much. It makes me so happy. And it's something that has pretty much always been a part of my life. So it brings me back to my childhood. So happy, happy overall, I'd say with film. So what is it about pictures, whether they're still or moving? What is it that gets you about those? Hmm. I, I really love shooting things that are in the moment. I don't do a lot of planning when it comes to my work. I think naturally events and people's reaction, things happen as they're supposed to. So I like the idea of just capturing that in the moment. Hmm. So I think most stories are best from the beginning. Can you tell us a little bit about where you grew up and what was life like growing up? I am from Connecticut, a small town in Connecticut. I have uh, two sisters and my both of my parents are uh, artists. So I grew up in a artistic family um, surrounded by just creativity my whole life. And I've been doing film and especially editing since I was 10 years old, maybe. Uh, I've always just had such an appreciation um, for, for the arts, really. So that's kind of where it began. I was just, it's like the first thing I've ever really had um, a passion in and it just never stopped. It just kept growing. So it definitely started when I was a little girl. Can you tell us, is there any significance to your name? I should tell you, last night it, it, I was preparing and I was reading some stuff, and I listened to the Louis Armstrong recording of Georgia on My Mind to get ready. And, and then today I listened to Sweet Georgia Brown, the Harry Connick Jr. version. So what does the name Georgia, what, how did you get that name? So Georgia is... Uh, a family name. My dad's cousin's name is Georgia and they just liked it. So <laughs> there's no significance there when it comes to anything other than really it's just a uh, family name. Are you tired of people singing Georgia on my mind to you? <laughs> <laughs> Never. Although it happens pretty much every time someone hears my name. So <laughs> what about the movies that you grew up with? Were there Are there certain movies that remain your all-time favorites? I'm kind of um, different in the sense when it, like when it comes to uh, movies and watching movies. I'm not huge into, into sitting down and kind of studying film. So when it comes to filmmaking in general, I like to have my own, um, my own style. So I don't watch a lot of film or movies, but I do love comedy and I'm a big uh, Baz Luhrmann fan. I love 
his work um, with, I mean, his style, I love his colors. Um, but yeah, so on the top of my head, I would say Boz Lerman is someone that I really look up to. And yeah. So you say you're a comedy fan. What kind of things make you laugh? What tickles you? I love, I love just all, let's see. And Practical Jokers, I think is hilarious. <laughs> um, I love Saturday Night Live. That's a, um, that's a good one. And let's see. Um, yeah, I think just uh, like prank, prank jokes are really funny to watch. Um, but I also love like very intense, like psychological thrillers. So it's really, it's hard to just like pick one because I do love so, so many. What about music? What are some of your favorite kinds of music and maybe some artists that you appreciate? I really love um, electronic music. I'm really into Rufus to Soul, um, some alternative music by iMonster, um, Cage the Elephant. I'm a huge Cage the Elephant fan. And kind of just um, all like very different sounds, like not very traditional, I like. Um, yeah, big Harry Connick Jr. fan. <laughs> it's music, it's great. <laughs> yeah, but I, I really love all music, but I guess if you were to go on my playlist, that's what, what you would find. Well, on the note of Harry Connick Jr., the, uh, I was mentioning at the introduction, there's two music videos that you directed and they're very, very beautiful. The, not just the music, but also the visual. And people are going to see you made a good use of the winter landscape. So tell us about making the two music videos that you made for Harry Connick Jr., well, those videos were um, made completely natural. There's 100% natural light. I did not use any lighting source. And it was just me. I directed, edited, and shot um, both of those videos. And with Amazing Grace, I found this old opera house in Connecticut. And I have a fascination with abandoned places. I think they're so interesting. They have so much history, no matter what it is, it, it has a story. And so I thought that that was the perfect place for Amazing Grace. And it really had just a lot of um, uh, history, especially in that, in that opera house. So I love that for Am Amazing Grace. And with the Alone With My Faith, that was a very, very incredible um, situation when it came to being outdoors because we were freezing. It was very, it was like 20 degrees. It was in a blizzard. It was absolutely wild. Um, but everything kind of happened perfectly. I mean, we went, we spent one day finding different bridges all around uh, the Connecticut area. And that is something that I found symbolic when it does come to faith is the idea of having a, this, this bridge, this thing that you have to trust in order to get to the other side. Like you can see the other side, but it's having that faith really to get there that I thought was symbolic with bridges. And so we use those in that video and they both kind of go hand in hand when it comes to nature, which is my main focus. Um, and just using the environment as much as, you know, you would find like lights and, and crew members everywhere and like a huge production. I, it was just me, my camera and my dad. And it was very, it was so, it was so special. I don't think I'll ever do anything like that again. Cause it was, you know, during the pandemic and, it was incredible. Hmm. I like what you said about the, the bridges. That's very interesting. So something that I always like to say to people, and a lot of times I close my emails with keep the faith. And 
it can be sometimes hard for us to keep the faith. What would you say to someone out there? They find themselves losing their faith. Well, I'm a, a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. I think that whether you believe, um, no matter what you believe in, having some sort of, of feeling and acceptance of getting through hard times is it's so important. I mean, this whole, these whole past two years, especially like to have faith and to, to really just to always listen to your, to your intuition. Cause that is also another way that can um, like for me, like if I, if I have any um, hard times, like I'll, I'll listen to my heart and what that has to say as well. I think they're, they're related in the way that, you know, God, I believe in God and to trust that everything is happening in divine time. So if I were to tell somebody about whether like losing faith or how to keep faith, I would say, just start with, waking up and being grateful for being alive really because that alone is a miracle and gratitude especially is is something that can really help ground you um so that i guess that's what i would i would start because when when you do lose faith that means you know you could be at a very dark place in your life when you know really everything is is questioned and so for that just waking up and, you know, showing up and being there. I think that's a start to get your faith back. You're right. Gratitude is so important. So Georgia, what are you the most grateful for? My family. Hmm. Absolutely. My family is my rock. Uh, They're everything to me. So to have them, um, my faith, absolutely grateful for that. And I mean, there's so many things like it's just to be able to, you know, live every day and to have, you know, clean water and, and food, um, is, is, is a miracle. So I'm grateful really for, for just life in general. Hmm. Well, there's uh, speaking of family, I'm hoping you can tell me a little bit about this person, uh, I told you that he had me in his home, Harry Connick Sr., your grandfather. And uh, I still remember that day very well. I'd never met him. And he showed up at the door and he said, Paul, my man, come on in. (laughs) And we sat down and we did this interview. Uh, So tell us about the other Harry Connick, Harry Connick Sr. He is amazing, my grandfather. He's 95. He's just a blessing. He's, he still has so much energy as a 95 year old. He still has that, um, that strong, courageous, just very grounding nature about him. He knows, he knows so much. He has been through so much and his advice is always spot on because he just, you know, he's, 90, you know, since he's 95, you know, it could be hard to kind of relate to or like give advice to someone, let's say my age in twenties. Um, but it always seems to make sense. And he's good at really everything to like that has to do with bettering yourself and other people. And he's the ultimate giver. He gives everything and he, is always looking out for other people as family and he's just, he's incredible. So I'm, I'm just blessed to still have him in my life. Hmm. Well, we we've talked about a couple of people here and I'm curious to know about this. You know, when someone like yourself has a famous last name and you decide that you're going to do things that put you into the public, you know, whether it's creating videos like music videos or doing modeling or whatever all of these things it puts you in front of the public 
How did your mom feel about when you decided that you were going to pursue some of these things that are, are involve the public? Well, I think my parents have always been very supportive of everything that I've done and really passion in general and to, you know, follow your heart and all of, all of those things. But my mom specifically is, uh, she was a Victoria's Secret model and uh, she was definitely in the public eye for a while since she was 18 years old. And she really wants, you know, the best for us, but for me specifically to never forget, you know, where we came from. And we're all very grounded in that sense to, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to kind of describe, but I would say humility is very important to her and my family as well. Um, I guess, yeah, I would just say she's always making sure that it's, it's always for the best and everything that I do and all the decisions that I make are good for the long run and not just in, in the moment type situations. Hmm. So what would you like to do that you haven't done yet? Well, my goal is to be a travel uh, photographer, videographer, and uh, documentary so I would love to travel the world and go to very isolated places and make these incredible short stories explaining these untold stories around the world. That's definitely something that I that I'm working on. So that'd be very cool. Interesting. I know that you just got back from Italy. Can you tell us a little bit about that trip? What was that like? That was incredible. I went with my sisters and my dad. Uh, we started in Florence and we went um, to Rome as well. And it was just spectacular. The history there and the, the beauty, the art. I mean, there's so much. Every single place you look, it's, it's a work of art. So it was beautiful. It was very, very hot. So... <laughs> But it was amazing, especially spending time with, with my family since they're on the East Coast and I'm out here in California. So it was it was a great trip. What have you found California to be like? There are a lot of entrepreneurs mm. out here and I find it easy to meet people in the industry. Um, that's mainly why I'm out here is for, uh, for filmmakers. And that's, you know, the, a big thing about here. So I like, I like that. And it's, I'm in Los Angeles, so it's definitely a lot of like entertainers and, and people in that industry. So yeah, I would say, I would say that. Hmm. Well, where have you not been that you would like to, given your interest in travel and, and shooting that kind of film? I would love to go to Greece. I think it's so beautiful there. Um, and really all over China. I have such a fascination with uh, the Buddhist culture as well and doing some um, some work over there to, and I mean, really anyway, the culture over there um, in some places is just so unique and to kind of get a perspective from somebody that lives really anywhere all over the, like anywhere in the world with something that's very different than Western culture is fascinating to me. Well, I can tell you, Greece, you're right. It is very very beautiful. And the people in Greece are really what make it. It's just, they're, a, they're a, a lovely bunch. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> the first time I crossed over the Greek border, it almost seemed like a dream kind of because the car is driving and there's these little kids and they're running alongside the car 
and not like they're chasing us or anything like, or they want something. They were just like joyfully running al- alongside the car. And you think like, am I in heaven? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. I love that. They're just happy to be there. It's yeah, great. <laughs> they are fun loving. That's for sure. I love that. Well, you just, you were, you were just in Italy. Tell us where else have you been that was very enjoyable for you or very interesting? Hmm. Well, when I was around 10 years old, I did a Asia tour with my dad. Um, Also, we went to Australia, Malaysia, China. Let's see, where else did we go? I think those are, yeah, the main, the main areas. So that was incredible. That was amazing. I think that really, oh, Thailand as well. That really sparked my um, interest in different cultures. I think Thailand was probably my favorite. Um, I have so much, so much love for nature and just to see that, that the forests and the, just how everything comes together is, it's exceptional. And then again, like the Buddhist culture is, um, amazing. Um, let's see. I love Peru. Peru is amazing. Machu Picchu. Just, it's hard to kind of pick just one thing. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, has there been a compliment, whether a professional compliment or a personal compliment that has meant the most to you? That is a good question. I think just any recognition for my work just means so much. I don't think any specific um, thing that one person said has really stood out. I think it's just the, um, yeah, just the overall acknowledgement of my work. Really, I can't really pick one thing. <laughs> well, I know that there were lots of people who, uh, you know, and I'm sure you went and read some of them. A lot of the comments on the music video for uh, Amazing Grace and the um, uh, All Alone with My Faith. Did, did you read a lot of the compliments or comments, I should say, that people left? I actually don't read any comments. <laughs> um, I... I really just like to uh, mainly live in the moment. I'm not a huge social media person. I do have to because my work, mm-hmm. um, but I really just like to share my art and if people like it, then um, that's amazing. But I don't really go searching, I guess, for, mm-hmm. uh, for those kind of things. But anyone that did say anything, I'm very thankful for that. So you consider social media a necessary evil? I do. I do. I think it has good properties, but I think it can be um, hard on people sometimes. So I try to keep it as healthy as possible, but it's definitely, um, it has pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Well, I want everybody out there, again, the website is the Tatum Project. Dot com And that's T-A-T-O-M, the TatumProject.com. They can check it out there. And I always like to end the interview very open-ended. For anybody who's watching this, for anyone who's listening to this, what would you say to them? I would say... Hmm. is such a (laughs) a tough one (laughs) I would say probably never give up it's very open-ended and cliche but the just showing up and giving any sort of effort is so important I think just to have have something to 
to work towards. And no matter what, no matter what it is, big or small, to never, ever stop working for it. Because no matter what happens, something, whether it be the end goal or something beforehand, if it's like another route, it always works out no matter what. Everything always happens exactly how it's supposed to. So I would say just to not, just don't stop, like don't quit because it's, it always is amazing in some way. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually lied. I'm going to ask one more question. Okay. <laughs> How do you define Georgia Connick? Who is Georgia Connick at heart? Hmm. I think I, I would just say a, a, a lover. Like I love, I, I mean, I love everything. Like I'm, I love life and I actually really do mean that. And I, I try to bring love to everything that I do. And I, I think it, it's the core of existence. And I like to bring what I can to make the world a better place, even if it's just, you know, smiling at someone or in my art, I like to, to make people feel good and any sort of, any sort of way that it can improve even the smallest things. I, that's what I'm, I feel my purpose here is to spread the love. So, yeah. Great answer. I think in, in all the hundreds and hundreds of people I've interviewed, nobody has ever said a lover. Oh. So that's pretty cool. Well, Georgia, thank you so much for making the time to talk to me. Thanks so much for answering all my questions. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun. My pleasure. All right. Well, keep in touch. Lots yeah. of success your way. I know it's coming. Thank you so much. So good seeing you. All Bye. right. Until next time. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs>